Um, hi, my name is Ian Hingley. I work, as Phil said, for a company called the Urban Movement. Um, uh, I'm a landscape architect and urban designer, and I'm going to talk. <coughs> this, I know this magazine's about the uh, the general topic of, of uh, green in the city. Uh, I'll, I'll probably touch. It's probably about a ma the macro scale as well. I'm going to talk about the very micro, or at least end up at the very micro scale. Uh, hence the, the sort of opening picture here, which is weeds growing out of a crack in in the gap between a curbstone and a uh, and, and a, a channel in Glasgow. Um, <clears throat> and I'll sort of come on to why that picture's at the start later. Um, and it, but it connects very well with stuff that fennell has been saying, and stuff that Gary was saying as well. I think. Let's have a go anyway. Why verges? Um, I, I, I suppose, the st oops, something we were t talking about, you know, the, 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 how, to, how to green all, you know, the greening of the city or what, what, what these components are. You know, we know on top left you can see a sort of a traditional London square. That, uh, this is where, the, where, where my office is on Exmouth Market. Uh, diagonally through the middle is Rosebury Avenue and then to the sort of right hand side is a sort of big park network and some social housing with their, with their gardens. Uh, and what I'm concentrating on doing at the moment in, in my career is really designing or redesigning streets and retrofitting streets. And that's where you can see that the, a, big, a big component of that, that section of city is, is street and, and, and the sort of main one, Rosebury Avenue, contains a lot, of, uh, a lot of foliage. So that's why I'm sort of looking at verges because that's where the trees kind of tend to go. Um, and this is the sort of view at, at street level of that same street. So you can see the sort of, uh, you know, this, not just the environmental qualities, but the, the sort of spatial qualities and the sort of the atmosphere and character that a tree brings to, to a city street is, is something we haven't really talked about either, but I'm not going to dwell on that either. Um, <clears throat> I think when we think about verges, we think about the suburban street, the grass verge with trees growing in it. Um, and I mean, it might look a little bit something like that. But it, 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 that's a very suburban typology. Uh, and what I'm really interested in, or what I'm trying to advocate really through this, through this, this little talk, is that we need, to, we need to introduce this typology, the verge, in, in some form or other, into much more intense urban environments. And I believe it's, I believe it's entirely possible. And it's something that we should be doing uh, through planning uh, of new schemes and through retrofitting um, uh, existing, existing environments. And in, in, slightly, in a slightly more intense urban environment of, of, of Hackney, you, you can start to see some of the benefits of uh, trees in grass verges. Now, there's, a, there's quite a lot of room there, uh, and that's not always the case in, in urban centres. So <coughs> I'm going to sort of I start going on a bit of a walk, really. I, I stepped outside my front garden uh, and realised at some point in the past, probably in the 1960s, that the, the grass verge that formerly ran along the edge of the footway have been concreted over. And I found, and I'm not quite sure why, I'm sure there were a number of good reasons that the council had at the time to, in relation to maintenance or maybe an idea of mess and messiness and the fact that you know, cars were increasingly parked along the curbside so people were stepping out of their car onto what potentially could have been a muddy verge environment and getting their shoes dirty, which is a catastrophe. Um, but it's funny, the trees still survive and the trace of the verge is still there but it's, it's been concreted over. And that's, that's contributing very, very little to, to the environmental services that that street could do. Uh, if well, it contributes nothing. The concrete is, 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 has, a, has no real positive qualities whatsoever in this context. So I went to uh, Copenhagen. I noticed that they, they kind of deal with their, 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 their verges slightly differently. They use them um, to plant trees in. Um, they detail them with a permeable surface so that water flows into them, drains down, feeds the tree roots. And they do it, they do it in Paris as well, exactly the same. And they, and they use that same zone, the verge, becomes the furniture zone. So they stick, that's where they put the signposts, that's where they put the traffic signals, the light columns, the seats, uh, litter bins, all that kind of infrastructure, which is necessary in an urban environment, goes into the verge. Or, or we call it, it comes to the furniture zone. We should start calling it the verge and start to detail it as a verge. And of course, 
They even do it in Italy. This is a, this is a, this is uh, Udine, which is a, <coughs> an industrial northern Italian town. And this is this is the main route. This is the main high street route which connects the station to the sort of medieval old town. Uh, and even even here, where it's, the, the footway is very very narrow, they still find room for a, a narrow verge which takes the trees, and it takes um, it takes some bicycle parking uh, and some signposts. So it's 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 all over Europe, and w and then. Again, Lisbon, they, they managed to they squeeze in a grass verge and, in, and combined it uh, with some planting as well. But I suppose in London, <coughs> what we've got really is we don't have verges. We tend to have uh, a sort of a, a square rectangular hole where the, where the tree went. And that's about the, the most permeable surface in that street. Uh, there, there are where the gully, uh, the gully pot is. So just look at the different... The, 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 this idea of the, you know, the grass verge, a little bit further on, I mentioned this is probably the thing, the thing we think about first, is this idea of the grass verge. And, I mean, one of, the, one of the oppositions to the grass verge, I think, is, that, is, is this idea that it gets, that in, in intensive urban environments, it's just going to get worn, it's going to get muddy, and that suddenly, that suddenly is a problem. But it isn't really a problem, I don't think. And the idea that you know, they, they need to be... You know, they're, they're, they're kind of sought after, this is by the canals, so it's a different environment, but they're, they're sought after spaces as well. So they, be, they can become points of uh, social interaction. I mean, this one by the Regent's Canal is only about 600 millimetres wide, but it's wide enough to, to sit down, or for one, for one bloke to sit down and have a lie down uh, at lunchtime and uh, <coughs> get, get a bit of a suntan. So they don't have to be big things, but very often they're squeezed out because, because space is at a premium and once we've got the footway and the carriageway and the cycle lane, there's no room for a verge. Um, and I'm just going to quickly look at some uh, examples of the next, <coughs> the next type of verge. Oops. So that beer's just overflowed if you saw that. <coughs> That's teaching teach me. Um, this is in Paris again. <laughs> A fairly intense area, I think it's called, is it the Marais? Is that how you say it? The Marais. It, which is very, you know, a very intense urban area, and they still find room uh, to, to um, have these fairly heavily planted verges. And again, in Amsterdam. Is that Amsterdam, Chris? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I mean, I've went on these trips with Chris, so I, I'm trying to, <laughs> trying to remember where they all are. But again, there's a whole, a whole street network here where it, it's, it's, it's rife with these planted, planted verges. So they can kind of deal with it. They seem to be able to deal with it a lot better than, uh, than we do in this country. Uh, I think that's Paris, yeah, Bastille, I've got that one right. Uh, and then in more examples in Amsterdam of, of using a hedgerow as opposed to, in a more formal way. Uh, and an isolated hedgerow again, I think, I think that was in Amsterdam as well. Um, this is in Hackney, and it's just a little, it's a little verge on private land, but it's, it's quite interesting again that you've got sort of two metres worth of, of, of verge here planted up with some birch, with birch trees and some, some ivy, but there's still enough, you know, they've found the room uh, <coughs> to install this, this facility. And I like this one, this is, uh, outside, this is in Hackney as well, the, uh, Ash, I think Ashwin Street, um, the Arcola Theatre. And this is sort of going to lead me on to the sort of second thought around, around verges. Um, this is obviously planted. Uh, but it's a sort of DIY guerrilla uh, intervention, if you like. So it's quite, um, it's quite shambolic in a way, but I quite like that. And then the third type, which we've, I've already looked at, which I discovered in, in, um, in my trip to, on my trip to Copenhagen and uh, Italy, um, is, is, the, is this gravel version. I think this, this material, self-binding gravel, or <coughs> which, is, which is increasingly commonly used now in London. This is quite a brave little scheme, I think. Um, in uh, at Euston, no, in the Euston, on the Euston Road, the, under, the Euston underpass goes under there. Well, what I like about it is it it's extensively uses uh, this self-binding gravel material, which is cheap, permeable, uh, easy to maintain. It looks nice. And I've only, all they've done is, they've only, they've only paved the bits where you might want to walk. So, that, you know, a, a, a more generic or a more typical response to that site might have been to pave the whole lot. But in fact, they've been very selective in just paving a, a couple of routes and allowing the rest of it to operate so that the, the self-binding gravel allows the trees, uh, or at least feeds the trees with, with oxygen and water. Um, 
And that's another, uh, just some more shots of that particular scheme. And it's something that I've been sort of trying to do around Brighton Station, and I've been pushing for this idea of a, of, of a verge, which is uh, detailed in self binding gravel, the same as at uh, the previous slide in London. And there's a couple of trees to go into this verge as well, but in the interim, uh, the cafe next door, or opposite here, has taken over this space and started to put up their uh, aid boards and displace some of their goods. But that's just kind of an, an interim solution. It will, be, it will take some trees, but I'm sure that they will, will reinvade that space. Um, and then the final, th well, I think the important thing I was to talk about as well is, is the, these, these things in themselves aren't managing surface water overtly. They are, they are doing it by being, imper by, by, by being permeable. So the water is seeping into the into the groundwater system, but it's not overtly managing, uh, managing that. So they're not really such schemes, and that's in the, in the true sense that maybe the rain gardens were that Gary was talking about. But I did discover this little uh, scheme in a verge in Dunfermline, which is a completely unremarkable housing estate where my sister lives. Um, and you've noticed the little gravel track down the side. But what they've done, and I, I'm not even sure if this works very well, but it's basically punched a, a hole in the curb, which then takes you to a gravel soakaway, then, which just then feeds uh, feeds into the subsoil. And I say I don't know. I don't know how that might if if, if that's how that's managing hydrocarbons supposedly that, are, that occur in the in the runoff from carriageways, or how well it copes with storms. But at least at least they're having a go at a very very simple low cost way of managing uh, surface water in in that sort of grass verge context. Um, so that's kind of a slight aside, but there's another detail here. I'm going to say go, get right down into the micro scale. Um, this is a, this is in Edinburgh, and that little strip down the middle is that little gravel strip down the middle. That's a soak away, and that's taking water off the footpath and just sticking it into the subsoil below the below the grass. And then you've got some because the grass is oh, there's a lot of pressure on that path. You get a lot of overspill. It's, it's kind of reinforced for that first two meters with a plastic mesh. So. I suppose the message there is that you, 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 do, you do really need, need to get down involved in that detail to be able to Im, uh, implement some of these bigger macro um, uh, uh, ideas, those bigger scale ideas. And then this thing about the carriageway verge, and this, is, this is a slight shift in a way. Because uh, I've already been talking about the footway, footway verges, but I want to talk about carriageway verges as well very quickly. This is a, just a, a typical London street. Now, there's no point, there's no need, and the council do this on a, I don't know, maybe a 20-year cycle, they resurface the whole of that carriageway. But only the middle bit is ever, is ever trafficked. You only get bikes or cars running up and down the middle, so there's absolutely no point in resurfacing the, edge, the two edges, which are almost continually parked up with, uh, with residents parking. So it's a complete waste of money, but if, if that was allowed to degrade, that would then start to become, imper become permeable, and some of that water would start to seep down into the subgrade. And it's something that they do in Glasgow. All the, all the streets in Glasgow are originally uh, uh, stone sets. And rather than create a, a smoother running surface by asphalting over the entire surface, they leave the margins where people park, not in all the streets, but in some of them, they leave the margins where people park uh, in the old sets. And these sets tended to be uh, detailed with a wind dust joint, so they're, again, they're permeable to some, to some degree. And this is where you get these fractures where you can allow you know, vegetation. I mean, that, that vegetation is still vegetation. It might, not be, you might, it might be perceived as a weed, but it's still, doing, it's still green. It still looks, uh, it's still a positive message, I think, and it's still doing photosynthesis. It's still processing water on a very, very small scale. And then, this, I'm going to talk about this, this idea of recluttering, which is, I thought about what, what are possibly some of the oppositions to the idea of a verge in an urban environment. And the first thought was, came from the idea of decluttering. Now, we spent probably the last 10 years looking at s slides like this, saying our streets are in a shocking condition because they are cluttered. And that's, that's fine. They are. They're, they're a shocking mess. But then we started, and I, this is one of my schemes on the Walworth Road, and I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but we, we went towards this, this idea of decluttering, so we got rid of as much stuff as we possibly could. But I think that also meant some of the positive stuff, because we, we still have 
There are still some trees on the Walworth Road, there are still some seats. But as a, as a visual language, what we're going towards is something which I call the, the sort of new minimalism. So it's looking, it's, it's developing a aesthetic which is completely empty and it, in itself quite sterile as well. So what I think, and that, that sort of, that, that idea of decluttering has extended itself uh, from streets into public spaces. So public spaces tend to be very, very empty as well. So the idea that you pave an entire square, building to building, in some hard impermeable material, to me is, is a slight nonsense. And there's no seats in that space, for starters. There's, 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 there's half a dozen, well, there's three, three or four trees. Um, and it's not necessarily the fault of the designer, it's probably the client as well. I hope the designer's not here. But, <laughs> but then what you tend to get is this generic, as you say, hard paving. So all the footways are just hard paved, often in Chinese granite, often in this, exactly the same colour. So you just get this very, very uniform, bland aesthetic that's developed, which came out of this idea of decluttering, which was a, which was a very legitimate and valid idea. But you've now got something which is very, very sterile and lifeless. Um, and that's sort of probably typified with this thing which I call the corporate aesthetic, which is private uh, public spaces. You can, see, you can see the reflection of the security guard in the corner. He's controlling behavior, but the design of the, the space is very, very rigid and controlled in, it, in, its, in, its, in the way it's been put together. And this, this manifests itself you know, in, in sort of even schemes from back in the 80s. And it, it, even in uh, Amsterdam as well, you get these very, very cold, hard, sterile spaces. And even, it's, even in the public realm, this is in, this is in Doncaster where I'm from, the, the, council, the new council civic building is still adheres to that uh, minimal aesthetic. Again, all, all of it are in a response to sort of decluttering, I think. And then, in opposition to that, is this thing which I call the guerrilla, guerrilla aesthetic, which is you know, anti-corporate in a sense. It's not funded by anyone. It's not funded by big business. It's not, it's not expensive materials. It's just done by local people who come along, hack out a few paving slabs, uh, and plant some trees and some shrubs, and put some seats out. So that's in direct opposition to uh, the corporate aesthetic. And it, you know, again, it can look, to get a bridge through that planting, it's very, it's, someone's found some old grating and just put it down. So it's very, very, it's very, very shabby. I mean, probably the shabbiest uh, guerrilla intervention is in Hackney, where someone's just simply dug a few holes in, in the carriageway and planted a tree. But it does work. So the one end you've got a corporate, and then the other end you've got uh, this guerrilla aesthetic. And if you sort of believe the sort of Marxist uh, historical materialist viewpoint in that change occurs when the norm develops an antithesis, so if you can imagine that the, the thesis or the norm is the corporate aesthetic and the antithesis is the guerrilla aesthetic, those two come together and clash and form a new synthesis, which then becomes a new norm, if you like. And I think what I'm advocating is that we need a new aesthetic, which is somewhere between these two, the corporate and the guerrilla. And I'm, I'm sort of suggesting maybe it's called the ecological aesthetic, or, or it, you know, it, but it's probably not the right word, but it might be. But it's something that's probably been happening in parks, is that rather than grand, bland swathes of mown grass, you now get the introduction of wildflower meadows. This is in London fields. So it's, it's a common, it's an idea which has uh, invaded park de design, if you like. But it's yet to invade the street. Um, and this is in Paris. But th and this, this sort of, to me, in a way, helps to typify this, this ecological aesthetic. In that it doesn't matter that the grass verge is a bit worn. It doesn't matter that the grass verge is going to get a bit muddy, that some of the details are a bit shabby, that you use old materials mixed up with new materials. You know, it's not the corporate aesthetic. It's not all brand new imported stone. But it's not the guerrilla, guerrilla aesthetic, which is really a little bit a little bit ramshackle and maybe not appropriate for our sort of urban centres, a little bit more controlled than that. You know, and in Copenhagen, just, you know, it's this idea that it's, it's, you can do a parking bay in, self, in, a, in a reinforced self-binding ground. It doesn't have to be a, a block pay, pavier or a, or a granite set, you know. We can, we, it can be a little bit rough and ready, a little bit shabby. 
And then we, we reuse some old curves in, in uh, Brighton to make the loading bay. So rather than throw them away, we chopped them all up and laid them. So it, it's to say, they're not new sets, it's old granite, but it's been reused. So that idea of reusing stuff, not, not necessarily looking for new stuff all the time, is part of it. Um, this is a, a slightly unconnected, well, not that it's not that unconnected, but it's slightly off left field, I suppose. This idea about fractures as well, about not, not trying to seal all the surfaces uh, in our streets or our public spaces. That allowing, if you allow little gaps to occur either naturally or artificially, you can allow for vegetation to just emerge in those, in those tiny little fractures between the paving stones. This is, and again, in Italy, they just, all they've done is, pay, is, is the smooth paving is as wide as the car needs to be. And you can cycle up and down those as well if you need to. But the rest of it is just this loose, this loose cobble. And again, this idea, you know, the parking can be a grass creek. You know, and these fractures between them support so much, so much richer than, uh, than, than, than the concrete verge outside my flat in, uh, in Islington. And again, this is, this is actually in Hackney, again, going to that same idea about just allowing some fractures, which allow moss to grow, a little bit of, a, little bit of, a few weeds to come through as well, are all, uh, are all sort of positive contributions on this microscale. Even, you know, a tiny little bit of a little hole for a tree allows some vegetation to grow. In this, in this otherwise very, very uh, hard, sterile street environment. And this is sort of advocating this, you know, we need to, we need to develop a new, a new typology of urban streets, I think, which, which include the verge somewhere, somehow. Um, and that, you know, that verge, you know, principally is for tree planting, but it can do all these other things I've just talked about. And I say that in, you know, this, this is one of my the best examples, I think, at the moment, just, just trying to push that idea forward. And again, the idea that this, the self-binding gravel is maybe not suitable for walking on. You get thousands of people walking across to uh, Regent's Place every day across this self-binding gravel. You know, you've got this material which costs £30 a square metre next to material which costs £150 a square metre. And all that needs, if it, as it wears away, is topping up slightly. You know, and it allows water through, and it allows, it allows oxygen exchange with the roots in the atmosphere. Um, this is a job I did at Stockwell Bus Guys for Lambeth Council, which is just to, 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 to get them not to repave when we do the repaving job, the whole of the footway, just do half of it, save yourself half the cost of the slabs, and then improve the, the quality of the environment, growing environment for the trees. And I say it's something we're trying to push uh, in Brighton in my... Um, in the station project is to, is to any, any space that doesn't need to be hard paved isn't hard paved. It's going to be detailed in this self-binding gravel or where it can take it. It's going to be detailed in, in, a, in, in with planting or, or, a gra or grass. And then Fenella say, we, we're going to push this a lot harder in Valley Gardens. So we detail in these streets which have these uh, almost continuous verges which are going to try and do some surface water management as well. And they're all, we're going to try and plant them as, as many of them as we can, as well as grass and, and use the self binding gravel. So, really, it's just, this, it, my plea is to, is to get the verge back in the city. Um, and I think, you know, I, think it's, I, think it's, I think it's doable. Thanks.